Hello, it's my pleasure to present uh, our Shrek uh, track record or uh, results on shape correspondences of physically based deformations. So this uh, competition considers shape correspondence, uh, which basically finds uh, a corresponding uh, a location for each position on the source uh, source shape. So there are two types of methods. One is a method based on registration in the spatial domain, which directly work on the shapes in R3. The other type of method is uh, spe spectral techniques, which work on different signal-based representations of the shapes, which are typically uh, processed in high-dimensional space. So uh, shape correspondence has many applications. Uh, for example, uh, given two shapes, source and target shapes, uh, if we know the correspondences, we can use that for shape interpolation or extrapolation. Uh, for shape reconstruction, uh, every uh, when we use RGBD sensor, uh, every time we can only uh, capture one view, and to to produce a complete reconstruction, we need to have multiple views, and to and to fuse them, we need uh, their correspondences. For information transfer, we have a source shape and target shapes. Once we know the correspondence, we can then transfer attributes such as uh, texture from the source shape to the target shapes. And for uh, for uh, for classification and retrieval of non-rigidly deformable uh, shapes, uh, we can use uh, shape correspondence to factor out uh, these uh, post changes, and then focus on the retrieval. Can focus on the the, the actual shape. So there are different types of deformations which are common in in practice. Uh, so, uh, so for example, that includes articulation, which in, uh, which are piecewise rigid deformation. Uh, for uh, and, and the bending, which may basically means uh, the shape uh, deforms while preserving uh, geodesic distances. So we're considering isometric or near isometric deformation. So in this case, the distance from A to B is largely uh, preserved when it's bent to B prime. And for the third type is about stretching, which basically means that the geodesic paths are no longer preserved. The, the, the distance can become uh, uh, longer or short, uh, larger or, sh or smaller. And that includes isotropic. Uh, stretching, which means that locally the uh, the stretching is the same in different directions, or anastropic uh, anastropic uh, deformation uh, stretching, where, where uh, different directions may have a different uh, level of stretching. The last one we look at is, is topological changes. That means uh, you know, the GD's path may change uh, through a short, shortcut or, or, or when it, beca it becomes uh, broken. That happens when uh, you know different parts of surfaces touch or, or, or uh, the, the object becomes uh, broken in certain places. So uh, for the study, we consider uh, we try to uh, model different types of a physically based uh, uh, deformation. To start with, we uh, we follow this uh, psychological idea called a scission. So scission generally describes perceptual disentanglement problems. Uh, in this in the simple case, if you have a retinal image that can be decomposed into illumination image and uh, and the reflectance image. Uh, now, for the shape uh, analysis, shape scission refers to the separation of an object from its transformation. So, a transformed object can be uh, object can be decomposed into the original object and its transformation. So, uh, from that original study of uh, shape scission, uh, they actually consider eight principal types of deformation. Uh, here we focus on deformations that are non-destructive from for practical reasons. Now that lead to four poses which were selected based on deformations described in the shape scission paper. Now, as we can see, the twist deformation uh, presents particularly challenging local geometric changes. Uh, in addition, for each pose, we also uh, perform three scans uh, with three different internal materials, uh, cuscus, uh, cuscus uh, risotto, and the chickpea. And uh, we, we're filling the same amount of uh, these different uh, materials. And by varying the internal material, you can see that the local surface appearance actually changes. So, uh, and also, uh, many proposed correspondence methods actually require an initial set of correspondences, which uh, they then refine. Uh, therefore, it is important to select an appropriate method to establish an initial set of correspondences, which we'll study later. So, uh, what is the most motivation? There are existing data sets for non-rigid or uh, for, for uh, shape matching. Uh, for example, data sets such as uh, Tosca comprise of isometric or near isometric deformations. The fourth interpersonal data set introduces challenging non-isometric and topological changes. However, as we can see, the state-of-the-art approaches now achieve excellent levels of accuracy, and you can see with uh, improvements become uh, more, in more incremental. So therefore, uh, more uh, challenging data sets can be useful to, uh, for future uh, development.
Now, what, what we learn from the literature, so many multiple uh, surveys conclude that no method is necessarily superior in all scenarios. Uh, so how, how do you know which method actually should be used in a given scenario? So, so in this study, we consider uh, these physical-based definition, these four typical types of definition, and then we can then apply these methods to the, the data set we create, and then we can use that to understand how uh, different methods cope with different types of, different types of physically-based definition. So how is this track organized? We create first create a data set and we compute initial correspondences to be used consistently by those methods which rely on them. And then we call for participants and then evaluate, evaluate their submitted results. First data set, the data set was, create, uh, was uh, uh, captured by ourselves using a, an, uh, an Arctic Artec 3D Spider High Precision Scanner with a resolution of 0.1 millimeters and accuracy of 0.05 millimeters. Now, in this study, we focus on different types of physically based definition. Therefore, we, we, we actually focus on only one shape, which is a rabbit model uh, shown here, uh, was, uh, uh, which is made up of a stretching jersey fabric and was covered in 590 colored markers. Now, these markers are essential to uh, help us establish ground truth correspondences when this, this object actually, actually deforms. Um, we use 12 scans to capture the entire rabbit model. Rabbit model, yeah. So in terms of initialization, we tried three different uh, methods. The first method, the Boises Napoli, is a basic, uh, a typical implementation of non-rigid ICP iterative closest point method. It uses both point-to-point -point and point-to-plane terms to help line points and as rigid as possible regularization. The method we, we refer to this method as NICP. And uh, the second method is based on uh, pruning. So you st it starts with the uh, existing, uh, it, 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 with the um, correspondence, pairwise cor uh, correspondences initialized using shape uh, descriptor matching and then uh, uh, they prune these co initial correspondences by using a measure of coherence with respect to neighboring candidate matches. So we refer to the method as pruning. A third method, uh, uh, claim and SL, is a method uh, which computes regional level correspondences. They use heat kernel signatures as descriptors and then which are then clustered and point-to-point -point correspondence is uh, then computed using a variant of the original function mapping method. And we refer this to this method as SEC. Now, in terms of the, the procedure, uh, the uh, participants uh, take the, uh, the data set with the pairwise scans. They work out uh, the correspondences. They submit their results as uh, barycentric coordinates of uh, a source point where uh, and the location of the, the, the on the target surface that matches the individual vertices on the uh, source, uh, source surface. So here are the list of the methods we use. Um, so the first method, Boston and Pauli, is a, a typical uh, non-rigid ICP formulation. It uses nearest neighbors to find correspondences. The energy function combines point-to-point -point and point-to-plane distances, uh, their terms with a locally as rigid as possible formulation to regularize deformations. The second method uh, by Dyke et al., which uses a, a uh, which attempts to estimate anisotropic anisotropic deformation by iteratively applying non-rigid registration and then updating the estimated anisotropy. The Lee et al. Uh, this uh, method observed that in common scenarios such as the articulated motion of human deformations are primarily uh, piecewise rigid and therefore large areas will concentrate in small areas and uh, therefore uh, they, they enforce a uh, some L1 sparse uh, constraints. Uh, R3DS wrap using the initial set of correspondences for pre alignment followed by non rigid ICP using a cost to find approach. Uh, Rosella is a method based on functional mapping. They generalize the method uh, to handle uh, partial matching. And Isis and Benchen uh, propose a method to refine the initial functional map. The method can handle non non-isometric uh, and uh, unlike early uh, functional mapping approaches, the method can compute subvertex correspondences. Uh, Ren Hello uh, use uh, a uh, functional approach. Information about surface normals is incorporated into the energy function. This helps the method handle problems associated with intrinsically symmetric shapes. Uh, Vesner um, et al. Uh, this, this is a method, uh, a spectral method capable of handling non-isometric deformation. A multi-scale approach is used where correspondences are established in finer and finer shape segments. And the last one, Farm Plus, is a template-based registration method that was originally developed for humans. Uh, for this dataset, a model was manually rigged, which was used as a template. So essentially, it's a, it becomes a semi-automatic method. Now, for these methods with a tick, these, uses, uh, these methods use initial correspondence.
So all the SMS are submitted results for all shapes. To evaluate the quality, we use a, a well-established method to, uh, to, to uh, calculate the correspondence accuracy. So for uh, each uh, estimated correspondence x, y, so from the uh, source uh, point x to the target point y, uh, if we know the ground truth, which is uh, maps x to g on the target surface, then we measure the geodesic distance between y and g normalized by the square root of area of y. And then we can use that to work out the distribution of uh, correspondences errors. So that, that, that we can create a graph like this, which shows a certain number of uh, correspondences are within some error bound, geodesic error bound. So you can create a graph like this. Now, for the initial correspondences, we discovered that NICB actually achieves the best accuracy. Now, this is likely due to the torso of all shapes having a reasonably good initialization. Another reason, obviously, the, 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 um, the shapes can uh, change quite, local shape can change quite a lot, which means that these methods based on local uh, dis descriptors can perform uh, quite badly. And uh, we have to say that both NICP and SEC produce dense correspondences, uh, while pruning only uh, produces about 7.4% of correspondences. The results of initial correspondences, uh, you can see that uh, um, Using correspondence computed by NICP was fun to help give the best results for all methods, except for uh, R3DS wrap, which uses a more robust NICP strategy. So for all the methods, we find that Farm Plus actually performs the best of all, any method using a semi-automatic, but the method requires uh, uh, this uh, uh, requires uh, 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 in, initial uh, rig, uh, rigging, which means that it's a se it becomes a semi-automatic approach, and the Rand et al. actually performed uh, the the best of any fully automatic pipeline in this case. Uh, regarding different poses, we found that on average, all methods achieve the best accuracy on the indent poses. Okay, so that 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 may, that may be due to the limited amount of deformation induced by indenting the shape. The twist poses proved to be the most challenging, uh, with the lowest a average accuracy, and none of them probably were able to model the twist and deformation as well. Uh, in general, uh, Vester et al. and Rotola et al. performed the worst in in uh, these poses, and uh, the indent pose. Uh, and for the indent post, you can see that R3D RIS actually performs a lot worse than the other cases. Now, by close look at the uh, closely look at the cases, we find that basically it has one particular scan that, that performs particularly badly. In terms of internal material, most methods that perform uh, well rely on the NICP initial correspondences, or, or uh, like uh, uh, R3S wrap, which has an ICP based nearest neighbor correspondence. Now, due to the local perturbation of geometry, you can see that computing correspondences using typical handcrafted feature descriptors lead to poor results. Okay, if you summarize, uh, uh, in in this study, we uh, a benchmark data set with texture based ground truth has been proposed. And we discovered that a semi-automatic approach from PLUS, in this case, actually achieves the best results. And there is scope to include a training facility to, uh, for you know, methods based on uh, deep learning. Obviously, these methods will require a large amount of training data to produce uh, good results. And, and a further uh, investigation into the use of a shape descriptors and the computation of initial correspondences uh, is required to, to potentially further improve the performance. And, and uh, essentially, many math works actually require uh, some further investigation into parameter optimization strategies. So you can see that these are uh, left uh, as feature work. Okay, so so these are the uh, the list of participating methods, and you can find the data set uh, from from this link. Thank you for listening. <laughs>